maybe for someone who's completely unfamiliar, who is St. Moses the Black? Yes, St. Moses the Black uh, in the fourth century, he uh, is, an, is an African saint. He, he was a slave originally. He was so bad as a slave. He was so difficult as a slave that his owner actually got rid of him. And he would go into <clears throat> the deserts of Africa and actually raise a band of uh, bandits. And they, this gang, was they terrorized the countryside. I mean, they weren't just a gang. They were a brutal gang. He was he was what could arguably be said <clears throat> the most brutal uh, gang leader of his day. And they he one day stormed a monastery and punched through the door of the monastery um, with ill intention, confronted the abbot of the monastery, who would also go on to be a saint. And as it is in the account of St. Moses' life, the abbot was filled with such grace. He was filled with such grace that when St. Moses, when his eyes connected with the eyes of this abbot, St. Moses, he fell down on his knees in repentance for everything that he had done. And he begged the abbot to stay in the, in the monastery to embrace Jesus Christ. Uh, and the abbot accepted. And... Uh, Moses became a disciple of this abbot. Some time would pass, two men would crawl into St. Moses's room and try to rob him, ironically. And he ended up subduing the two of them, tied them up, and he drugged them to the abbot. And he said, these men tried to rob me. What would you have me do with them? And the abbot responded, teach them in the ways of Christ. And these two thieves became his first two disciples. And um, it is said in the account of his life that he had 72 men in his gang. And at the time of his death, it is said that he had 72 spiritual children that he had discipled. Uh, he ended up um, foreseeing his death, and choosing to uh, meet his death, actually by a rival gang that would, uh, that would catch him in the desert and execute him and six of his followers. They knew it was coming. They chose to give their lives as a witness of uh, Christ's love and redemption for mankind. There was a seventh monk who hid and recorded the event so that all the world would know um, how the great, uh, the great gang leader, Moses, would become the offering the sacrifice um, in this spirit of Christ's redemption. So it's quite a remarkable story, and he's he's been very um, he's meant a lot to us in our journey in Christ. And certainly, I think for for our community and in the, in the community that I serve, there are so many people who are uh, broken, who have regrets, and sometimes. It saddens me when people say, I have no regrets, because I think when we say that, we ignore the sins we have committed. I think every Christian should have regrets, and these regrets should lead to repentance. And I meet many people with regrets. And the good news is, is that we, you, we put up the example of St. Moses in his life, and we see what is possible in Christ Jesus our Lord. That with God, all things are possible. The sinners become saints that the gang leader becomes a spiritual father, a shepherd. You know, the wounder becomes the healer. Um, this, is, uh, this is quite powerful. It's been a powerful witness for us in our community, certainly. This episode is sponsored by ChristianMinistryEDU.org. Chances are, if you watch my videos, you love theology, and maybe you've even thought of pursuing a degree in it. But it can be difficult knowing where to start, which degrees to look at, which schools, and how you're going to fit it into your busy schedule. That's where ChristianMinistryEDU.org comes in. It's a one-stop shop for degree and career guidance, and it is structured to help you find schools and career paths that match your spiritual mission. With program and career guides that span across Christian leadership and ministry positions, you'll be able to make an informed decision about your specific calling to serve. Learn more about how you can gain the tools to pursue your faith-based future today at christianministryedu.org.